Hey, so this is going to be part two of um, the things I've recorded in my journal between uh, July and September of 2018. Um, so this is going to be part, part seven of this series and part two of this particular time period. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the list was pretty long, so I had to split it in two. So let's get started. Uh, I watched Colossal. Uh, it was an original, interesting idea. I'm glad I watched it, but it, I do not need to watch it again. The funniest part of the whole movie was that last sigh. <laughs> so, uh, I think right before it cuts the credit at the very, very end, someone asks her a question, and she's just like, Ugh. so. But yeah, it was. I'm glad I watched it, but nothing I need to rewatch or anything like that. But yeah, check it out. I watched Hunt for the Wilder People. This is a movie that I never would have watched. Um, and the only reason I did watch it is because when I watched Deadpool 2, the reason they chose the kid in that movie was because of his acting in this movie. So I wanted to check it out. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't get it. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. Um... We watched Out of Sight. Uh, this is a movie that I've seen in the past, but I didn't remember anything above it. I didn't remember anything about it. I really like the chemistry between George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez, and I think it's just a cute, fun movie. Um, I like to how they're they're enemies, but they're like drawn towards each other. It's sort of like a Romeo and Juliet type of thing. But yeah, Out of Sight is always always fun for. I lunch through. Um, I finished watching Rick and Morty season three while I was at work today. Um, uh, great show. And I, I'm assuming that right after this, I start on season four. Um, but yeah, Rick and Morty is was pretty pretty funny, especially if you're uh, really into science and stuff like I am. <laughs> uh, we watched Children of Men. So when I watched the uh, Cinema Sins podcast, they came out with like the best movies of every single year that they've been alive, and then they vote on it. Um, so it starts in like 1975, and they go through the 80s, and you know, pick they pick Ghostbusters and uh, Back to the Future and stuff like that. And then once they finished with that, they would go through and. Of all those movies, what was the uh, the best of uh, the years they've been alive? And uh, I don't know. I think I really wanted them to pick like No Country for Old Men or, or something like that. But they went with Children of Men. Uh, so Children of Men has an interesting idea. If women stop giving birth and the human race is pretty much bound for extinction... Like the uh, the last person was born like 18 years ago or something. I can't remember the, what it was, but so everyone think it's like the apocalypse, but <laughs> it's not like we're being invaded by aliens or an asteroid or anything like that. It's the apocalypse just because the fact that we're no longer reproducing. Um, so it's an interesting idea, and I don't know what it is about the movie. I've watched it a few times, and I don't know. Maybe it's just not for me, but they praised it so much. Uh, so I, I watched it again, and I was still... Um, I don't need to watch it again. It has one it has one good idea and keeps me bored for two hours. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I watched Disenchantment, which was... So the creator of The Simpsons also created Futurama so he did you know modern day he did the future and obviously he's going to go back in time and do something from the middle ages and I don't know it just it wasn't for me I will continue watching it in the future just because of the fact that I've seen all the Simpsons well I take that back I've seen all the Simpsons up to like maybe season 15 or somewhere around there I don't, I don't know and I have seen all the Futuramas so I go through and watch all the disenchantments just to see if it uh, it figures out what it wants. But uh, just like The Simpsons, season one wasn't the best, and they they did get better. So let's see what uh, future season does. 
um, my nephew Sammy was born. So that's something that happened during this time period. Um, something I have been thinking about recently, create a complete and total status update. This would record everything. So this would be like inventory um, of everything I own. Uh, our current jobs, distance to work, how we get there, hours we work, our bosses, uh, pH level, weight, price of gas and milk, net worth, uh, stock market levels, age of family members. So a lot of this stuff, like the stock market, you can go and search that up online. Uh, other stuff, um, like, you know, apps that you have on your cell phone, is it's more personal. And if you don't record it, you're never going to know. Um, But this will this will put it all in one place. So, um, and because I recorded a, a journal and each file is one month long, so maybe you can do this at the end of the month. So at the very very end of the month, you just always had the status update that records everything. So if you ever do go back and read um, March of two thousand six. Uh, a lot of people will be like, yeah, I was living here at the time and I was had this job. But other than that, it's like, what cell phone did you have? Um, you know, how much did you weigh? What what was your net worth? Things like that. A lot of that stuff is could potentially just be lost to time at that point. So this would be a really good way um, to record all that. Um, current screenshots of popular web pages, your desktop, cell phone apps, all this information. Oh, yeah, I just said that can be found elsewhere, but it will be all collected in one spot for easy access for the future. So there's an idea for you. Um, something else I did during this time period was I listened to the audiobook from Master of the Game by Sidney Sheldon. Uh, this is another one of those books I had to read for my job, um, for the book group. Uh, my thoughts. Um, very easy to get right into the story and the audiobook the oh in the audiobook he pronounces mist as mess which I don't know why um, would make an excellent mini series you root for Greg at, at this point I don't even know who Greg is you root for Greg until he publicly shames the woman and he has a sad loveless marriage hard to be a female during these times the last day, at least they were, I need to work on my grammar, at least they were not racist. Uh, the book moves so fast, uh, no details, the whole thing is like one large summary. Reminds me of Atlas Shrugged when it talks about Kate being a ruthless businesswoman. Um, same time period too. Um, I did enjoy it. After I finished it, I re-listened to the beginning again, now that I know who all the people were. She was talking about it at the beginning, so was it like a framework type of, type of story where you start at the end? I think it was. I think you start at the very, very end when she's really, really old, and then she goes back and tells her life, starting with her father, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, it, was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I watched Superman Homecoming. Wow, what a great movie. I look forward to watching it again. Um, <coughs> Charlie's... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Charlotte's Web Theory. Fern was alone with no friends, so her animals were her friends, and she made up everything, even wrote in the web in the middle of the night. Um, a person could make a whole series of adventures that happened on the farm. We do need some backstory as to why Wilbur was such a trusted friend to Charlotte, uh, so she put so much effort into saving him. She laid her eggs, egg sack and died away from home just to just to help out Wilbur. So, spoiler. <sighs> so, yeah, that's a little theory that, you know, animals don't talk and she just made the whole thing up. Like, you know, what would the rat say? What would the spider say? Um, joke I posted on Facebook. I am fully convinced that they made a lot of candy corn back in the 70s, saw the monstrosity 
they created saw the error of their ways and stopped all production lines. Every year they repackage what they have left and sell it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'll still eat it. When I do, I'm thinking to myself, I bet this thing is older than I am. So that's a joke I posted on uh, Facebook at the time. It was probably around, uh, around Halloween time when uh, candy corn was out and about. But yeah, is any candy corn new? <laughs> so I don't know. So those are my thoughts um, during that three-month time period. So I hope you enjoyed.